Hello everybody, it's time for another tier list. This time it's going to be about sacred seals. Now, we have a lot of seals to cover, so this video most likely will pass the two hour mark. Hopefully it doesn't, but uh, knowing me, it is going to definitely pass the two hour mark. So, I kindly suggest you to actually go get yourself something to eat or drink because this is going to be a long one. I will also be covering the upcoming Tempest Trial Seals because, well, they're coming, might as well do so. Um, a lot of them are really solid and honestly the main reason I wanted to get this video out now was to actually be able to put my thoughts there before they are, they are released. So, yeah. Let's get into it, shall we? So I'll start with the Tempest Trial Seals, now I'll go from the top of red to the bottom, then top of blue to the bottom, and so on. So. Oops. Flashing Blade. My bad. Flashing Blade. It's a really solid seal. The main reason why it's worse than Heavy Blade, though, is just it's very limited. Horses and Pegasus units cannot use it. Heavy Blade is fantastic purely because so many units can use it. Flashing Blade less so. Still, a lot of characters can really abuse it, and honestly, one of the best user of it is Ishtar. Uh, I've said this in my own Discord before, and if you want to join that, that's gonna be in the description below. Moving on. Um, but Ishtar has a base 36 speed and a plus 6 speed on initiation, so 42 base speed with Flashing Blade is really, really, really solid. It also means that you can combo, um, say, Draconicora, because our Tome is also cooldown minus one, with Flashing Blade and Desperation. You attack and then you proc Draconicora as a result. She can hit stupid amounts of speed. She is one of the best speedster in the entire game. When you're talking about initiation, she actually has better speed than even Carla, unless, of course, you switch your weapon out for something else, which why the fuck would you do this? Don't do that, that's a dumb idea. Vessel's Blade is one of the strongest weapons in this game, so don't do that. But yeah, Ishtar is extremely solid with this. Uh, other characters are include Mia, ironically Carla as well. Uh, the problem though with Carla, and by extension Fur as well, because Fur can also abuse this, is even if they use a 3 cooldown special so it becomes 2 so you can use Desperation on top of this, it's better to just run Wrath with Moonbow, but if, if you want to just have like a slightly worse option but more budget, this is still an option. The reason why I say Wrath is better with Moonbow is because you end up racking so much damage with it, and on top of that, on top of it, the best thing about this with Fur and Carla is that Wrath will just insta insta charge their uh, Moonbow on the next turn. So it's better to have a one cooldown special as a result with their weapon than it is to use a two cooldown. Even though the two cooldown has a higher damage ceiling. But that's just how I feel personally. Moving on to Speed Ploy. So, Speed Ploy, you might be wondering why it's so low on the list. It's because, in general, there's not that many characters that really want to get the increased speed. Um, or rather, there's not many characters that can use it and, on top of it, abuse it. Uh, one of the best characters to actually abuse it is, ironically, Dirdre and Julia. The problem is they prefer having it in their C slot so they can also run Phantom Speed, so they can actually run stuff like Water, water Sweep. Uh, the reason why that is is because they're Dragon Killers, yes, but they don't always want shut the Dragon. If they do not want shut the Dragon, it tends to spell Doom on them. Uh, for example, if it's a speed plus Naoi and it's on a defense tile, it's actually going to be a struggle to actually one-shot 
a uh, in AoE depending on the build it's running. If it's quickly enough, if it's quick enough, and it does not like ditch out its res, you might actually struggle. That said, that doesn't mean that Speedploy the Seal is bad. You can definitely use a, another unit on the team to abuse Speedploy so other characters can abuse the effect. For example, you could probably, I don't know, run uh, a healer with uh, Speedploy, say a wrist because he has so much res. And then on top of it, use Carla, who actually does require to get healed, to get healed up sometimes because she is so frail. On top of this, this would also buff Carla's weapon pretty well. Um, the main, the main thing with Vassal's blade is if she's fighting a speedy unit like herself, or Thur, or Mia, or Ira. Well, Vessel's Blade just becomes a 60 in my beat stick with a cooldown minus one, obviously, which isn't bad per se, but it's still not full damage. So you can actually, like, with the help of a support, do full damage with uh, Vessel's Blade. Either that or actually get a double. It's it's really up to you. Moving on, we have Kanas's other skill, because of course, last Tempest Trial, we got Rest Tactic, and on this one we're getting HP Rest 2, which is the other skill Kanas has in his passive, that we actually didn't have as a seal. I don't understand why they went for this. Little bit of trivia for you, a seal with double stat like this, like HP and Res, will score 200 in Arena. However, if, it's, if it does not have HP in, as one of the two, for example, if it's Attack Death, it scores 160. I have no idea what Aias was smoking when they were doing this decision, but it is what it is. For some reason, this seal scores more than Attack Death. Whatever. It's not bad per se, but you, if you're going to use it, you're most likely going to use it on a healer, because healer don't exactly have a lot of option for A slot. Usually it's push or brazens, which aren't exactly ideal for healers. Push can be really solid though, but the problem is it's a very premium skill. So, uh, yeah, um, and even then, those are not seals. The thing that's really good about this is characters like Elise who have like zero fucking HP. Seriously, Elise has the lowest HP pool of the entire game right now at 30. Um, seals like this can really help her out. In fact, skills like these can really help her out. My only issue with this though is its HP and res. Res is not exactly a very good stat for ranged units. Now, is it? So, if you really want to go that way, I'd say maybe wait for HP death. As well, uh, even then, like, it's very cheap to upgrade. But HP Death would at least help you against a, the Dragon matchup, which she might be able to live as a result because that's 6 bulk against armor, not, not armored unit, against dragons. So dragons like Naoi might actually start to have a, a bit of a struggle to kill, especially if you run something like Fortify Horses to also bolster that bulk even more. Now. Do I consider it that great? Well, obviously with the ranking I've put it on the tier list, not really. It's it's a very minor seal. Don't really you should you shouldn't really upgrade it. Also, for the two people who are curious as to why I know it's going to be colorless, Res and HP are both colorless seals. There is no reason for this not to be colorless. And flashing and speed ploy are both uh, based on speed. Everything that's based on speed is blue. So, yeah. I, I don't think it's going to be any other color. The main reason why I even like separated by color is purely because, well, first off, it looks better. <laughs> Let's be honest here. But also because to, to just show how dominating the red pool is compared to the rest. Blue, green, and colorless is nearly nothing. Colorless is honestly pathetic, 
Uh, the two seals they have is just a one and done seal. You don't have anything to upgrade there. So as a result, it's like S minus or lower for anything that you want to upgrade. It's kind of underwhelming. And blue, if you remove like flashing blade and distant death, it's not great either. It's not awful though. Not nearly as bad as colorless. But yeah, enough of that. It's already been 10 minutes and I have like, what, 40 seals to go through? Yeah, we're here for a while. Quick repost. Quite literally the king of seals. Uh, there's many combos you can do. Bold fighter quick repost is the most, you know, cancerous one. Uh, the most known one. You can also use it as a seal slot for like a tank such as Lucas and then run something like guard as the B slot or chill skill as the B slot. There's plenty of things you can do with it. Um, it's just a really solid seal as a whole. It's really solid also for HM farming. There's plenty of situation where you, all you need is just a double to get a kill and be safe. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just a really solid seal over. I don't think I have to explain why, like in grand detail, as to why it's such a good seal. Quick Repost can be used on so many units. Even units like Ira could actually use Quick Repost, despite having so much speed. And the main reason why is because Quick Repost just breaks a lot of skills. Lecter's Armads can, it, that just prevents you from being doubled. Wary Fighter. Those skills, if challenged by a skill such as Quick Repost or Bolt Fighter, if you are quicker than the enemy by 5, you will double through those abilities if you have Quick Repost on them. Now, I'm not saying Quick Repost Ira should be the best thing that you can do, that you could come up with. It's not. That's. I'm just trying to illustrate a point here. Characters such as dragons in general, like Young Tiki with like 35 speed can really abuse Quick Repost because it's not exactly a speed where a speed threshold where you double it's a speed threshold where you start to avoid doubles but you don't consistently double so as a result Quick Repost is a really solid seal or B slot for that matter to just break so many of those skills like Wary Fighter, Electors, Axe uh, Murr's Breath as well, you can actually completely break that if you are quicker and you have quick repost. There's plenty of situations. I, I think that's more than enough already, so I'll move on. Now for Heavy Blade. Oh boy, Heavy Blade. Like I said, it's just Flashing Blade which, with a lot less restriction. Uh, plenty of characters can use this, like stuff like slaying weapons can really abuse this. Slaying weapons, especially like uh, Cordelia would, in a goat setting, can really abuse this. Cordelia would like Slaying Edge, not uh, Slaying Edge, Slaying Lance, my bad. And Gale Force, actually, can really combo this together and just keep procking Gale Force every turn consistently with Desperation. Completely out of danger. It's a really good seal for that. Uh, Soleil really abuses it. Anna can also abuse it. Uh, Mia is another one, uh, Ira as well, if, you, uh, if you're if you afraid of not exactly having, like, you go attack plus, so as a result you don't have enough speed to really use Ira's blade, uh, so you want to go like heavy blade for certain units, such as Carla, who tends to go speed, or um, Mia. It really is up to you. Well, not exactly Mia, but it's more like so you have another option. Honestly, though, it's not that great on there, and you should just keep Ira's Blade if you're going to go on that path. The, be the best option for Ira, though, is Slaying Edge, which doesn't require either of those because then Ragnar has to raise a one cooldown. But that's 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 just me saying this. Like another uh, another set of character, I guess Bartry could use it with, in tandem with Quick Repost. What a surprise. Lucas could. Uh, Shigure can. Uh, sure she can with a slaying axe set because she can still hit somewhat a good amount of speed. Actually above 40 even without buffs. Um, th there's really a lot of options you can go. Uh, Raven is also a really solid one. 
Um, <laughs> there's just a lot of them. So, yeah. It's a really solid seal. It's mostly, though, if you're going to use a high attack unit in your team comp. Uh, if your team comp in particular does not really use Heavy Blade, then don't upgrade it, obviously. But there's just so many characters that can use it that I feel like you should actually upgrade it. Also, honestly, the best user of it, and I'm, I feel so stupid for not mentioning them, Blade Tome users. Blade Tome users with Draconicora can just charge Draconicora and two attacks them. Because they just hit, like, stupid amount of attack. Heavy Blade does keep in consideration buffs from Blade Tomes. So, as a result, if you're like 50 base attack and then with buffs you have like 56 attack, in reality you have 80 attack with the blade zone. It is taken in consideration with every blade. It is really, really excellent on them as a result. Now, let's move on to Close Death. Close Death is one of the de facto best seal for HM grinding, or honestly grinding new characters as a whole. Uh, for example, like, you want to grind a new unit, and it's the melee map, and the unit is melee. You just slap close death on them and just end turn until it's over. Or dragons can really abuse it. Anything that has, like, mixed bolt can really abuse it. Hell, even characters like Lucas can just hit 40 res with, like, Burkut slants and, like, close death and warding breath. It's ridiculous how much you can do with this. Just a really solid seal that you have no reason not to upgrade, honestly. Just like Quick Repost, th those seals, you just have to upgrade them, honestly. Um, they are not exactly cheap, obviously, and there's plenty of red options. So you if you're a new player, pick Choosely. Pick, pick choose. what the fuck am I saying? Pick Wisely, like something that will be more beneficial for you. I have 4 seal in the S plus slot, so if you're a newer player and you don't have that many badge, just keep that in mind. Uh, distant death is also better than close death in a lot of scenarios, so if you want to save red badges, go for that. Close death is better the higher you go in arena, so if you're a new player, you're honestly not mo most likely not going to be scoring enough to get in that kind of range, so as a result, distant death might have more utility than especially since both of them are extremely solid for um, Chain Challenge, Tempest Trial, Grinding Units, and obviously Hero Merit Grinding. Moving on, Drive Attack. One of the best thing about Drive Attack is just how low cost it is. If you already have Drive Attack 1, it's a hundred secret point. It is so cheap. It is so, so, so cheap. And it's one of the better drive, in fact I'd say it's honestly the best drive. There's many characters that can abuse it, anything with brave weapons can really use it. Any character in general can use it, like there's no... The, the, you just cannot have too much attack in, in general. Sometimes you can have too much speed, which is just like wasted at that point, but attack, you'll always have just more damage. There's no reason why you would have too much attack, unless obviously your goal in the map is to not kill a unit in particular, so you can actually live longer, something like that, but you can just remove the seal at that point, it's no problem. Or you can just move the unit away, it's not a, it's really not a problem at all. Moving on. Oh, and before I move, actually. Brave Weapon really abused this. Like, you, if you've seen any video with my George in it, you can definitely see what I mean by this. Double Drive Attack is brutal on anything, especially Brave Bows. So, if your goal is to just clear Chain Challenge, I'd say Drive Attack is definitely one of your best bet. And if you're, if you're talking about PvE content, Brave Bow is one of your best friends for that. So having Drive Attack to buff said Brave Bow is definitely a great option for you. So, now actually moving on. Attack Smoke, baby! Honestly, a really good seal, and honestly can even outclass both Close Death and Distant Death at the same time. The problem though is it's only in certain situations. What I mean by this? Uh, it's quite simple, really. 
Wild Attack Smoke is definitely a great option. A really good uh, seal. Certain times you just won't be able to like lump enemies together. Really make use of Attack Smoke. So it's kind of eh as a result. But when you can, it can really, really turn things around. Because it removes 7 attack on anything around the, the target. Which means if you're fighting multiple foes in a row, well, your tank will be able to live much longer as a result. The only fuck the only hard fight is going to be the first one. So just keep that in mind essentially. Just a really solid seal, but a bit more situational and close and distant death where you can just pick up your fight one required. One week one required, sorry. Moving to Attack Ploy. Now, Attack Ploy is one of the best ploy, honestly, because there's so many characters that can use it. And removing attack from your enemy is always useful. Unlike speed, where let's say you're, re you're removing speed from something stupid like um, Lecter, Winter Tarja, even though that's probably not gonna happen because the girl has 36 base press. Like, it's not going to do shit. Removing attack though on the other end is always going to be beneficial for you. Uh, it's always going to help you survive. And the best part about ploys in general is just it doesn't require to be the unit using it that fights for it to be useful. You can just use it as a ploy bot to debuff the enemy and then your other characters can actually abuse it. It's really also useful to use on anything that has that, that uses close counter um, or in tandem with a unit that uses close counter just so you can like bridge the gap between your enemy's attack and your bulk uh, it, it's just really solid as a result especially for characters that have alt homes um, mostly Tarja, Lin, uh, Henry, their armored version obviously uh, another character that uses this seal amazingly is Fur. Uh, Fur has what a lot of people consider low bulk, but the fact that she can actually use attack ploy kind of makes up for this. She can actually live a lot longer than characters like Carol. She completely outclasses Carol actually when it comes down to uh, users of the nameless blade weapon, purely because of that. Uh, ploys are her best friend honestly for both her C and S slot, and at the same time, it supports your entire team, so it's pretty solid. Moving on to Attack Plus 3, which I should have done beforehand, my bad. Attack Plus 3 is just really solid overall. Like I said, you, can't, you, you just cannot have too much attack. Ah, case in point. Uh, my Brave Bow still uses this, my George uses this. Hell, actually, my George uses this, my Bright Cordelia uses this, my Summer Takumi now uses this, if I'm not using Brash Assault. Um, they're, like... <laughs> oh, and I think also my Leon uses this. Yes, I have maxed all four of them. This heal is insane. If you do not have one or two maxed already, you should. Brave Weapon abuses the ever-loving shit out of this, and it's just a really solid seal, especially for characters such as Reinhardt, uh, Brave Bows, uh, Brave Axe Shershi, uh, Brave Lance Est, I guess, can also use this, though she can also use Death Boy, but Death Boy is actually available now. There's plenty of things you can do, really, and yeah. This is a really solid seal. Like I said, you should have one or two maxed. Purely for at least Brave Bows or at least Reinhardt. Reinhardt can use Quick and Pulse Moonbow, I'm very well aware of this. The thing is though, Quick and Pulse Moonbow procs and works on one fight and one fight only. Reinhardt can check so many units without Moonbow. You can just attack, kill a unit, get Luna ready, and then proc Luna on a unit that you would otherwise not kill even with Moonbow and that will actually get the kill. Luna in general is better on Reinhardt in my opinion 
So Quick Impulse is not exactly a really good combo on him. It can work in, in one required, or if you're doing Chain Challenge. But as a whole, otherwise, no, I would say not really. Now, moving on to own attack. I doubt I have to explain why own attack is good. Own attack means just an extra four attack. Uh, it's extremely solid for hero merit grinding. There's a lot of scenario where you just need just that little bit more to actually get a kill. It's also really solid for um, just overall dancers really can use it. Um, like for example, spur attack and own attack really goes hand in hand with a with a dancer. Like I said, if you've seen me play the game, I'm using George and what the, and her support is support rather is Olivia. Olivia uses own attack and spur attack. I could actually just upgrade own attack and just have own attack as the seal and spur attack as the sea slot and just do that for another archer. It's another option, like I said. Own attack is just a really good thing. It's honestly the best own, but very slightly because own speed can definitely make you have quite a few uses, especially because not all unit just wants attack, obviously. Uh, Blade Tome really can abuse speed, so yeah. Own attack is just a really solid skill. That said, a lot of time, if you just want a buffer, own attack might not be the answer for you. Uh, purely because, as a whole, characters like Ephraim and Erika, which are your main buffers, or Titania now, don't really need this. Uh, Titania, for example, prefer having an uh, attack tactic, and Erika slash Ephraim already has 4 attack from their weapon. So, in those cases, you'd rather have Fortify Res or Fortify Death at 3. But that's pretty much it, really. Uh, own attack can have a lot of uses in Hero Merit Grinding. Like I said, this is from my point of view, and my point of view is from an HM Grinder, from someone that does a lot of Chain Challenge, from someone that, uh, that does a lot of team building. So, my views might be different than yours. This is, honestly, this, is, this tier list as a whole is a bit more uh, subjective than usual. It's kind of hard to really pinpoint this from an objective standpoint because it really depends on what your units are like for example if you do not have Ishtar Flashing Blade could be a tier lower Ishtar is honestly the best user of Flashing Blade but there's other user of it obviously so it would not be like C tier obviously but Ishtar honestly by herself is just such a potent user of it that it makes it go to S tier in my opinion there's quite a few situations like this. Like, oh, you don't have a, a say, a Brave Bow user or a Reinhardt, attack plus 3 would be lower. A lot of this is going to be subjective, obviously. But I'm keeping, I'm trying to keeping it with at least some reasoning for every one of them. So at the very least, um, people understand where I'm coming from. So, yeah. Moving on to Spur Attack. Like I said before, Omen Attack and Spur Attack can be a very deadly combo for brave weapons. But it's usually more... When we're talking about Spurs, we're talking more about baiting utility. Uh, for example, it's way easier to set up a tank with a Spur next to it to bait a certain unit than it is to attack with a with an offense dealer and use the spur at the same time. It's the same reason why bond skills are a lot better on tanks than they are on offense dealer. Now, ranged units can still use spur attack. My George uses it all the fucking time. But that doesn't mean that that doesn't mean that it's overall like mostly for offense dealer. It's definitely more for a baiting play. So as a result, attack is definitely still good. Characters like Lucas, most armored unit can really use attack. So it's really solid. Spur attack would be really bad as a C slot in an armored setting, for example. 
But since we're talking about seal slot, they don't have like their C taken up by say a drive or ward armor or armor march or panic ploy. So as a result, you can actually use for attack with especially in tandem with stuff like Altom Tarja, it's extremely solid since as a result you give already two to all stats due to the Altom, but on top of this you give an another four attack because of the spur. Alright, moving on to Threaten Attack. Now, Threaten Attack is definitely a worse ploy, but it still can have a few use. Um, that said, it's still in the middle of the tier list. A tier is where it starts to get iffy, in my opinion, to upgrade those. It really depends on your situation. So, as a result, Threaten Attack, while decent, is just that decent. There are so many seals that are better than it that you should upgrade first, that it's not exactly worth working on. That does That's not to say that Threaten Attack, wow, Threaten Attack is useless, but usually if you need Threaten Attack, you're better off just learning it from another unit. Now, it's pretty useful still if you're baiting, and most of the units you're baiting are actually melee based. If you're scoring low in arena, though, that that type of situation can be kind of inconsistent, because when you're low in arena, you can find mages a lot more consistently than when you're higher up in arena. Still, it is a decent seal in case of, but again, there's better options. And honestly, if, you, if what you need is more uh, bulk, just use Attack Smoke. Attack Smoke is going to do Threaten's job better. Uh, it has a better range, and it doesn't require them to actually like get in your range in a certain manner. But that's just my opinion. Moving on to Seal Attack. What a garbage skill. <laughs> uh, seal attack is just... Don't... Don't upgrade this. I know it's not in the lowest tier, because there's still some utility out of this, but even then, it's usually because you're using a ranged unit to debuff stats, right? And if you're using a ranged unit to debuff stat, this is better off in the B slot, because you can use double smoke. So as a result, it's kind of underwhelming. Seal skills in general are extremely, extremely underwhelming. Um, they're really hard to use, and like I said, the situation I said earlier, that's basically the only situation you'd use a seal in. Um, it's just not that great. Moving to Deflect Melee. Now, why is it so low? Well, first off, it costs a harm and a leg to get. So, you can imagine already that doesn't really bode well, does it? Well, yeah. Yeah, no, it doesn't. Um, it costs a lot to use, and it's overall not that great. Unless you're using a mage without close counter, which, why would you? This skill, this skill is only going to be use, useful against brave weapons, and brave weapons tend to be either ranged, Reinhardt and George, or Bravelin, well not George, but I meant Bravelin in general, or Fire Sweep, which, yeah, Fire Sweep could actually make this useful, but the higher you go in the arena, the lower your chance to find Fire Sweep for one. And second, a melee is like the only melee based uh, brave weapon that really is still consistently used. And it's still. It's not great. It's not great. <laughs> well, no, it's a fantastic weapon, but it's just not really used in general. Or rather, Elincia isn't really used in general. 
uh, especially the higher up you go. Like, Alencia, I, I, I could not tell you the last time I've seen an Alencia. It's, it would be like five to six months ago. Now, if you're scoring lower than I am, because the lowest I score is 720, and the highest I score is 750, so finding that kind of unit can be kind of problematic, obviously. But if you're scoring less, you might actually find those more, but even then it's not exactly worth it. Because you're only checking one or two units, whereas your seal slot could be better used as, I don't know, closed death or just, which works on everything melee related. <laughs> like, why would you use the threat melee over closed death? I don't understand. There's just so little situations where Deflect Melee has any kind of use. Deflect in general, and also, to add insult to injury, despite it being one of the three most expensive seals to upgrade, because you are forced to create it, there's no way to obtain it, and it's the highest cost for creation out of any seals, there's no seals other than Deflect seals that cost 50 to make, it's 200 SP cost. It scores less than a ploy. It scores less than a tax mug. Close them. Heavy blade. Quick repose. Drive attack. There's many seals that just scores better in arena, which is important. And at the same time, it's just th those seals actually do something. For you, unlike deflect melee. I would also take the, take this opportunity to tank. Postmodern Serial, I hope I didn't butcher that too hard, uh, for providing me the screenshot with uh, Deflect Melee because. <laughs> Have fun finding people actually getting the seal to 3, and yeah, I was pretty happy to see that I, I actually managed to get all those seals as a result. So yeah, thanks to this guy. <laughs> now, moving on. We're moving to the blue seals. Boy oh boy, blue was such a shit show um, before before flashing blade because it's like distant f three speed plus three and then uh, <laughs> it's not ideal. Distant death three though is honestly one of the best seal of this game. It's extremely important in a lot of situation for PvE content. PvP not so much, the higher you go in arena the more useless it become, but as a new player you can still definitely abuse this in Death 3 uh, in arena until you score higher. And even then, there's like hero merit grinding you can you can use this in a lot. GHBs in general you can really abuse this. Uh, chain challenge can actually really use this as well. There's a lot of options with with uh, the seal. Like to give you an idea, Clarissa's GHB, Ursula's GHB. Um, I would say Lloyd, but not the way I actually used it. But I can definitely see it used there as well. Um, Xander as well is a really good map for this. Uh, Mikael is not so much, everything is melee there, so obviously it's not that great. Oh, and before someone say, Arvis is better than Xander. Arvis is good, yes, it's better for short term, but if you're talking about long term, long term Xander is better. You have way be way more options of unit to grind HM on, on that map. Anyway, with that moving out of the way, um, Zephiel is not exactly a good map for Distant Death either. And Navarre doesn't really use it either, but still, that's overall the map you can really do consistently that uses it. Also, Infernal Robin! You need DD3 on that one as well. You absolutely need to. If you're going to do it, though, it requires you charging in a very precise uh, setup. I have a video of that on my uh, Discord in the GHB section, but moving on, uh, let's let's move on from the Discord. Well, that said, I guess I should say Discord will be in the description below for those who are actually curious. 
but uh, yeah. Moving on to speed class 3. Boy oh boy, there's not enough of these. Uh, speed plus 3 is a very solid seal as well. I'd say less so than attack, there's less unit that really abuses it, especially the higher you go in arena. I know I'm repeating myself here, speed is not good in high tier arena because it's mostly armor damn blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still, I, I will still point that up because new players will have a different experience as a result. Speed is an insanely good seal for new players. And it still is a really good seal in general. Um, I would say 2 is really like the bare minimum you can upgrade. Uh, it's a really good seal, especially for stuff like Flying Blade Tome, uh, Forest Blade Tome as well. Like, Blade Tome in general really abuses speed a lot. Uh, Blade Tomes have so much attack to begin with that it's like you'd rather focus on having speed so you can double and double your damage as a result than you do attack because you just have so much already. But you said earlier you cannot have too much attack. Well, yeah. I meant mostly with like Brave Bones or Fire Sweep or stuff like that. Still, speed is really solid for stuff like this. It's also really solid for Desperation users. Fire Sweep uh, really abuses this as well. Saying Desperation can really use this. Ira can use this, um, Carla can use this, and honestly she uses it better than Phantom Speed. A lot of people seem to think Phantom Speed is better on Carla, and I'm very confused. Because, yeah, you will hit harder, but what's the point? To be doing your full damage, that means basically you need to, have to be doubling in the first place, right? So, the only scenario where Phantom Speed is better is if you have exactly 5 speed above the enemy, so you can double and get an extra 3.5 damage, which Speed Plus 3 wouldn't give you. However, as silly as this sounds, Speed Plus 3 on the other hand would actually allow you to guarantee doubles, whereas Phantom Speed doesn't. Phantom Speed only gives you more damage through Vassal's Blade, whereas Speed plus 3, well, it just gives you more damage and gives you more chance to double. So as a result, Speed plus 3 is just better. Same thing for Ira if you're using her base kit. Phantom Speed is horrible with her because the, the thing that really makes Ira so good is that, well, base kit Ira anyway, because normal, like, the actual best kit for Ira is Wrath with uh, Slaying Edge. But base get Ira is that Ira's blade gives her two charge and then she procs immediately through desperation. If she doesn't double, it's eh. What's the point? Yeah. It, oh great, your Ragnar Astra is charged. So fucking what? There's no point. I think you get the idea already, but um, yeah. As I said, just like with attack, in this case you want to have at least one or two max attack is so good you can have way more than just two and honestly it's still really solid but yeah own speed now own speed is really solid like i said er, for speed i'm going to be repeating myself here a lot uh it's really solid for new players new players can really use the extra speed especially and old and new really can use it for chain challenge if you have a team that's set on speed, they can really abuse on speed. Uh, characters that would honestly normally miss a double can really use it in PvE or uh, PvP. But the higher you go in arena, the more useless speed becomes. So, well, not exactly useless, but having 50 speed when most of your your enemy's unit are 25 at best. And like the only ones that are really quick are like Amelia, Drog, and like I guess the uh, ranged armored unit, which aren't exactly uh, appearing consistently either. Outside of Tarja, obviously. Then yeah, it, it's really not ideal, is it? Still, Own Speed is a fantastic seal to use in combo with uh, Ephraim and Erica's weapon for buffing tool. 
Uh, it's also a really good seal for HM grinding. So there's plenty of situation you can use it. Just be careful. Uh, there's times where you'll prefer to have attack over speed. So it's a good seal to upgrade still. Moving to Speed Smoke. Now, there is a situation where Speed Smoke is more important than Attack Smoke. I'm not sure if I said this before, so I'll repeat myself since we're here. Um, attack Smoke is very available in the pool now that Kaze is in the 4-star pool. And Kaze gives Attack Smoke... Uh, yeah, Attack Smoke 3 at 4-star. As a result, if, you, if what you're looking for is a double debuff with Attack and Speed, well, let's just say that Speed Smoke Seal will be better as a seal, because it, because getting Speed Smoke as a sea slot is hard to get. Attack Smoke, on the other hand, is really easy to get. So yeah, if you're going to go for like say a dagger unit that debuffs every stats, you're better off with Speed Smoke Seal, obviously. But, but. I see this, but even then, it's kind of up in the air. But, um, speed smoke has a bit less utility than attack smoke. It can still prevent doubles, which is definitely good. But like I said, usually you'll use them in a pair, and yeah. <laughs> That's not to say speed smoke is useless. It has plenty of utility. It's just going to be more like. You're going to attack, debuff something, and then another one of your units going to abuse this, rather than the user itself, whereas attack smoke really shines, uh, because tank can just completely laugh at it while just taking le less and less damage because of attack smoke. Well, not less and less damage, but taking less damage on uh, consecutive battles. Speed Smoke still has a good deal of utility when required, and like I said, it's an amazing seal if what you're looking for is a double debuff. As usual, though, when you're high in arena, speed doesn't matter so much, so yeah, we'll be... <laughs> Phantom Speed, boy oh boy! I'm also going to take this situation to thank Maiko for uh, giving me the screenshot for Phantom Speed 3. Could not have actually done this without the, without uh, his or her help. I'm never too sure what gender he or she is, so whatever. Uh, <laughs> moving on from this, very awkward sentence. Phantom Speed can be useful in mostly two or three scenarios. Yes, it can increase the true damage that uh, Karla has versus characters such as Ira, since Ira, Mia, uh, and other quick units, since those units in particular will just not exactly outspeed her, but they will take so little damage from her blade that, like, so little extra damage, from her blade that uh, Phantom Speed can actually have a few uses. Like I said, Speed Plus 3 is better, but if what you're looking for is, uh, say, a Wrath setup, like Moonbow Wrath, well, in that kind of situation, yes, it can be better, because then, because of Wrath, you will proc Moonbow immediately, so having Phantom Speed to have extra damage on top of the Moonbow, um, can actually help in certain scenarios. So, as a result, yeah, it can definitely have a few uses, especially versus Ira, uh, versus other Carlas. Other Carlas will essentially get one shot by this because of the through damage increase. But yeah, it, it's not great, but not awful either. Phantom Speed is just not that solid as a whole. There's also the fact that you can combo speed ploy with phantom speed. Obviously I said this before but I'll say this again because we're on the subject of phantom speed. Um, 
so Durdry and Julia can actually kill dragons way safer. Uh, other wind sweep users are like uh, Grimma, like female Grimma, Summer, Young Tiki. Uh, most of the time they run wind sweep so they can actually avoid Fashion or kill Fashion users, or do enough damage so that another unit can kill the Fashion user. It's a solid option and just overall really strong, really useful, but. At the same time, it's a very niche use. If you're not using Grima, like female Grima or Summer Tiki or Carla, which are just three characters of the roster, one of which is seasonal, or you know, like Dirty and Julia, as I said before, which makes it five with one seasonal and one legendary, which is hard as fuck to summon. Uh, it's it can be extremely. Uh, it can be a big ass miss. It's not that fantastic as a result. Like I said, A is where it starts to get shaky, under this is where I consider it not worth upgrading. But if you have one of the characters in particular and that's the niche they have, that's the niche you really want to use, then Phantom Speed can definitely be your friend. Moving on to Threaten Death. Uh, threaten Death. Threaten Speed, my bad. Boy oh boy, Threaten Speed suffers from the same problem Threaten Attack has, it just has a better option already, Speed Smoke is a thing, after all. Um, as a result, honestly, Threaten Death would be higher than two of them. Threaten Res as well, but not so much, because Res is not that big of an issue. Death is, however, because there's so many very bulky units. But yes, Threat and Speed is about as useful as a pile of shit in high level arena. Uh, the only characters it would help you against is Mia, or Ira, or Carla, which you won't see that often, honestly. So, Threat and Speed is kind of a problem there. It can be used in conjunction with Carla for a weapon, or Nino's, um, which is something I should have mentioned with Phantom. I mean, Nino can also use this because of Giga Excalibur. But the problem with Nino, though, is that Blade Tome is just such a better option for her, in my opinion. She just has so much speed and so much and a decent attack that it just makes Blade Tome such a solid option for her. So, yeah. It's not that great. It can have some very niche use, but personally, I wouldn't use it. It can help Carla double another Carla or such, but in the end, it's not exactly needed. It's definitely not needed. We should avoid upgrading that one. Moving on to Spur Speed. Oh boy, the the shittiest Spur is in, boys. Um, the reason why I say it's the worst Spur. And why it's so low on the list while well, Spur Attack is A plus and it's B tier. And like even Spur Death is higher than this. And Spur Res is also higher than this. Is honestly because, like I said, the playstyle of Spurs is is usually baiting units. Why, in God's name, would you want to add speed on a tank? A lot of situations happens where characters such as Lucas do not want to have speed. They want to get doubled so they can charge their special faster, easier, better. So having extra speed is just counterintuitive. You literally hurt yourself. Unless you're using it in the same manner as I use for attack with a brave weapon or a fire sweep bow or, I, or stuff like that. But that is such a niche use. It should not be your main focus. The main focus is mostly baiting, and it does it extremely bad. So, it is what it is. Oh boy, we're already at 54 minutes. This is... I, I, I was joking when I said I, I, it was going to be two hours, but I guess not. Deflect Missile. As usual, this is not a screenshot I would have been able to get by myself. Uh, I want to thank X Nira for actually uh, providing the screenshot of this one. And yeah, so I want to ask a question. 
Why, in God's name, is a seal to counter colorless unit that looks colorless requiring blue fucking uh, blue badges to upgrade? Why? This doesn't make sense. This should have been colorless. And Deflect Magic should have been blue. But whatever. Stupid design aside. Um, Deflect Missile is honestly just about Deflect Melee. There's not enough characters that you'll fight that actually this would help you against. Brave Bow, Brave Lin, and lower tier can definitely be a problem. But it's never a problem to a point where you need to use this. If you're going to be needing to use this, you'll actually want to use something like a dragon. Now we can literally one-shot Bravelin in a lot of scenarios. Just use that. It's going to serve you much better than this, and this is so expensive for the reason to upgrade. And like I said, it doesn't even score well in the arena. Why? There's plenty of problems with this, and honestly, I, I would just repeat myself with the uh, Deflect Melee. Deflect Missile just only deals with Brave Bow, honestly, and who cares? Or Fire Sweep Bow, I guess. But again, who cares? It, it's like Fire Sweep Bow, you just don't bait Fire Sweep. Why would you do that? You get in range, then you kill them. That's essentially what happens with Fire Sweep One. You don't just sit there and be like, I'm gonna tank that, so I need Deflect Missile so I can kill the next turn. All the time anyway, she's just going to get repoed at. So it's not going to help you in any way, shape, or form. But that's just my opinion. Moving on. Oh boy, Poison Strike! Why is that thing worth, t worth 240 SP and deflects 200? Why? Why, why, why? There's, pl there's next to no one that can actually use Poison Strike well. Most of the people that actually use true damage are healers. And guess who can't use Poison Strike? Oh boy! And the only unit that could use it well is Jafar. The problem with that though is that Jafar can also use Savage Blow, which is just much better in general. So why would you bother with this? Especially since, honestly, after Jafar attacks, on top of the 20 damage it's going to take if you upgrade the Jafar's Dagger, which you should, is... Like, you don't need more than 20 plus the damage from battle. And that's if it's still alive. So, this seal as a whole is incredibly pointless. Like, very, very pointless. I'll upgrade it. It goes in the trash bin. Seal speed? Like, seal attack, I could see it work on a tank. Seal speed? Nah, 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 nah. It's basically spur speed, but worse. Like I said, you don't want speed on a tank. You don't. And honestly, if you really want this, speed smoke is a thing. Speed smoke is a thing to use it. Don't bother with this shit. So we're moving up to green almost an hour in, jeez, okay, Guidance, honestly the best seal from green. This seal, honestly, I'm surprised I don't see it this often in arena. Guidance is such a bullshit thing to deal with, and now the characters that can use it are Murr, Female Grimma, Summer Tiki, and literally like other, a, a ton of other flyers, like most of the flying mages can use Guidance well uh, if you're going to go for a mixed team. There's just, I don't see why you would not run Guidance if you have a flyer on your team. Uh, especially in the defense team, if you're on a arena team, it increases your mobility so much. It can get you just out of danger pretty safely. 
You can use it aggressively, defensively. There's many ways to use it. Now, this is mostly if you have a good flyer, though. So if you're a new player and you don't have a good flyer yet, this might be something you want to leave on the back burner for a while. Uh, and just focus on the red ones. Uh, so, or Distant Death, for that matter. But otherwise, it's such a really good seal for mixed team comp. You can abuse tactics with this. There's just no reason to not use it. Honestly, I find it so silly when I see, like, gr female Grimma that doesn't have guidance. It's so dumb. You already don't need IOD shield. You have a built-in IOD shield as your A slot. It scores the best already. There's no reason to change it as a result. So, yeah, guidance is amazing on her. And now, Burr and Young Tiki, that depends. If you score very high in Arena, so you don't see Archers, uh, Guidance can definitely be an option. If you do not score high enough, like, at that point, IOD Shield is probably doing you better. Uh, purely because IOD Shield will prevent you from getting destroyed by any Archer. Especially Murr, she has so much gold, she is so hard to deal with. But then if you use a bow, she just dies. And she has IOD Shield. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a really solid scene. Moving on. Death Tactic. Now... You'll see a trend with this tier list where I consider death to be better than res and attack to be better than speed. Uh, a lot of it is dependent on how high you score in arena. For example, you need way more death in the high tier arena. Uh, a lot of really hard hitting units hit in death, not res. Uh, there are strong res units, but typically they are either blue or their blade tomes on a flying unit or blade tomes in any kind of uh, team comps, in which case Res does not do anything for you. <laughs> so like, oh look, I'm fighting something with 80 attack, I'm going to take it with my 26 Res, but don't worry, I buffed it by 4. Like that's not gonna do much, let's be honest. On the other hand, 6 death is always going to be useful, you're not going to find 80 attack melee unit. Until Levitate, Levitate becomes a thing, but... Ugh. Honestly, though, like, if you're talking about res, at one point we're going to get Dole Range, obviously, as a seal. Dole Range is gonna be fantastic to deal with Blade Tomes. Until then, don't bother. Uh, <laughs> except for, obviously, HM Grinding. Uh, Death Tactic is amazing for, de for HM Grinding. A lot of map can just be absolutely destroyed with an extra six death. For example, um, Lloyd's map, I would use an Oliver to tank the fucking Archer. Death Tactic actually gives me the extra six death to actually tank the bow and kill him with like a uh, bow break. So as a result, obviously you're going to just want to have stuff like this to just buff your death. Especially since his C slot was taken by Spur Attack to buff Fjorm, so Fjorm could kill certain units. So, he couldn't run the Distant Death. Death Tactic can work on a different unit and buff your units completely fine. There's a lot of team comps you can do with Death Tactic. It's extremely flexible. Mixed team comps are some of the most fun stuff you can really come up with. And a lot of characters really like Death. Especially the higher you go in arena, where res becomes, the star is becoming less and less relevant to a point it becomes irrelevant after a while. Um, death, on the other hand, always stays relevant. This is the whole reason why Black Luna is such a threatening skill, because you, so many units work on death the higher you go up, and Zelgus, well, he still fucks you up. And also. On the topic of Zelgus and Black Luna, Black Luna also kind of mitigate overall uh, merge. Because the thing is, as you merge up, every character becomes bulkier. They have 4 more death, res, and 4 HP, so that's 8 bulk in both. Whereas their attack only increased by 4. Yes, your speed increase, but that doesn't matter if you don't double, does it? 
And even if you double, well, let's just say you're just basically doing 0 times 2 increased damage, and there's still a 4 HP, because your 4 attack versus 4 death, that's 0, and then there's a 4 HP on top of it. So things are more bulky as a whole, right? Well, Black Luna kind of shits all over this, because the 4 death becomes 3 to... loses 3 to 2 points. So as a result, yeah, you're, you're done with 1 point of death. Hooray. But, yeah, so, as a result, that's a problem, but every other unit death is just so good. Like, if you've seen what my Baroque's done recently in a video I've made, I think, uh, yeah, it's, I think it's my most recent arena assault run at the time. My Baroque just completely tanked an entire team, essentially, almost. Arden was proccing Aether, she was on a death tile, and it just did 3 damage. It would have done 0 if I had initiated. It's stupid. So, yeah. Death, is, death tends to be more useful, and Death Tactic can be used in a myriad of team comps. So, it's a really good skill to have. Especially for HM grinding. Moving on, Drive Death. Basically, everything I said about Death Tactic applied there, except it can even be used in um, other teams. Like, flyer teams can use this, etc, etc, considering they have a lot of slot open, it's definitely a good option. Uh, you can combo this with, say, also... Oh, I don't know... Um, you can combo this with Agoita, which is New Year's Zero's weapon, I probably botched the pronunciation, but whatever. You can combo this with this, so your entire team comp for flyers gets an extra, like, uh, 5 death, I believe. There's a lot you can do. Drive Death as a whole is really useful also for Hero Merit Grind. A lot of times you'll be missing one or two death, and Drive Death is just going to be just enough to fix that. I mean, for those who are, who are in the know, or I guess, whatever, I've done a Zephiel Team Comp. And I base tanked a Brave Axe to the face with my Death Minus Ishtar. Because of Double drive, die, double drive death Linus. It is also extremely cost effective, and I just see I fucked up that seal because in reality there the enhancement cost is 100, and that's it. You don't have a second upgrade. That's my bad. Oh well, I. This thing took me nine to ten hours to make, so. I guess I missed one part. My bad. So as a, just forget the 50 sacred coins, 60 uh, and one, 200. Just remo just remove that. That's the actual cost of drive of drive death. 140 coin if you uh, get it from scratch. If you already have the seal, that's only 100. It's it's extremely extremely cheap, and it helps a ton. So yeah. Moving on to attack death two. Attack Death 2 is slightly lower than attack because it gives you less attack. Um, it's very cost effective and it doesn't cost red badges, which is a def definite plus. Especially if you're a new player because you have to grind so much red badges. There's just so many good seal in red, so you want to kind of save them. The problem I have with it, the whole reason why I put it a tier lower, but still much better than Death Seal, is because the, the attack and Death 2 doesn't tend to help you that much. Uh, it will help you on characters such as Lucas, which requires both of them. But even then, Close Death tends to kind of just shits on that, shit on that as well. Um, so, it's a good seal. It just... A lot of situation you'd rather have pure attack or a close death, you know? It's a good compromise, it's really cheap, so it's a decent option still. I'm just saying, in, certain, in a lot of situation you prefer to have just a pure brains uh, badge when it comes down to it. Not to mention, if you're talking about a tank that hits, like Lucas, 
Shows death score is better. I'm sorry. <laughs> Moving on to death ploy. This is another amazing ploy. Uh, it, in my opinion, it is much better than speed ploy. Death ploy is really solid on characters such as fur. Um, like I said, attack ploy is a really good seal on her. She can combo both of them. Uh, Fur's main problem is two things, her bulk and defense, and on top of this, her attack. So, those two seals completely fixes that. Uh, you can basically have 34 base attack as a result on anything that you do ploy. So it is a really, really solid seal for her. Uh, it is also useful in a, in a good amount of uh, of situation. Titania can also use it, uh, though right now if you're using your weapon with the refine you're better off with a tactic, uh, a tactic seal, sorry. Est can use it. I know, I know, that's such a big meme, oh boy. Let's just stop about that. Uh, Est has a, good, has a very good rest stat. And with Brave Lance, she also has a really good attack. And Death's ploy just abuses that even more. Because the main problem that Est has is if you don't have Death Ploy, it's just basically a Pours Man Cordelia. And even with the seal, she's still kind of a Pours Man Cordelia. But still, the fact remains she can outclass even Cordelia as a Brave Lance user purely because of that seal. Now, that does not mean Est is better than Cordelia. Bullshit on that. Uh, Cordelia has more versatility overall because she can use different lances. Whereas Est is kind of relegated to having a Brave Lance unless you heavily invest in her speed stat. And if you do that, just use Cordelia. It's going to serve you better. Unless you want to use speed and... Uh, speed and... Death Boy. In which case, I mean... Really, I guess it can be about equal as Cordelia, except you'll have access to team support. So in certain team comps, she can actually completely outclass Cordelia. But even then, frankly, I don't know. It's it's a really solid scene. But yeah. outside of those, I guess there's also armored units, mostly the mage ones. They all have 30 plus res. Uh, Sheena can also use it really well, and also attack ploy for that matter, if you're curious. Since uh, her attack is, such, is so piss poor, and her bulk is so good, she can really abuse both of them. And I think that's about it. There's probably other ones that you can use. Uh, I'm just thinking of the ones on top of my head here. I don't want to take another two hours just talking about this, obviously, so, yeah. Let's move on. Fortify Death. Oh, and Death Boy also is really amazing for, uh, in general, some GHB. Though it's mostly luck to Xanders, because you can actually deploy Xanders with a weaponless character. Pretty easily. But... Outside of that, it can it's kind of shaky how useful it can be. Anyway, moving on, Fortify Death. Really solid seal for HM grinding. I know I'm repeating myself on that. Uh, it is a really good seal also in tandem with Ephraim and Erica's weapon. Again, um, that way you can buff all stats if you want to because of the seals, because of the weapon. Seal, Sea Slot, and then a Rally. So, yeah, Fortify Death is a pretty solid seal. Uh, just like Death Tactic can be used in a lot of situations. Death Tactic gives you more, though, for your bang? For bang for... Yeah, more bang for your buck, my bad. And, yeah. If you don't have Death Tactic to 3, don't even bother, focus on Death Tactic. That's my that's just my opinion though. Moving on, Ayude Shield. 
boy, oh boy, it cost fuck all. Get that. Get it. Just get it. Many characters can abuse Iota's shield. Uh, it's mostly Summer Tiki. Summer Young Tiki, sorry. Um, Murr also really abuses that. Uh, Ryoma, to some extent, can abuse that. It's so cheap, it's just 20 sacred coins and you get the full thing. So, yeah. Oh, and it's worth 200 in Arena, so it's not even that bad. In fact, for characters such as... For characters that are that do not have a pref weapon, Having IOD shield does not hurt their score in the slightest if the rest of the skills are at 240. So just keep that in mind. Characters like Sure She can actually do this um, pretty well. New Year's Camilla can also kind of use it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a good seal, essentially, is what it comes down to. And it's so cheap. The problem though is, if you're not, if, if you don't like flyers, right, there's no reason to get it, but at the same time it feels like, if you have at least one flyer team, which you should, IOD shield can be useful here and there, definitely, definitely. Anyway, moving on to Fortress Death. Now Fortress Death is a very weird seal. I don't understand why Fortress Death and Fortress Res are worth 160 SP, but they are. Um, so they score very poorly. However, there are some uses in those seals. Now, Fortress Death is definitely easy to get. There is no surprises there. It is a fairly easy skill to get purely because Seth fell to 4 star immediately and has it. It's a pretty solid skill. But not exactly on tank, I would say mostly on healers. Healers don't exactly have a lot of A slot choices, so this is a good choice. At the same time, a lot of healers don't exactly give a shit about their attack. Like, for example, look at Asama. That attack is like only rivaled by Enries. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? It's it's not great, so if you put uh, Fortress Seals on them, it's pretty solid. There's definite, definite uses out of that. And some characters just have so much attack they can just kind of take the 3 attack loss and be fine with it. Grimma comes to mind, but that mo that's mostly for uh, Fortress Res. Um, healers such as Clarine can really abuse Bulk to a point where my Clarine hits 41 death, 41 res, and like 43 HP, so yeah, fortress skills are really solid in general. The thing is, it's just so available, there's no reason to really go out of your way to upgrade the seal in question, unless you want to use a double fortress death, or fortress res and fortress death, but in that case, it's safer to just upgrade the fortress res one and uh, in the Red Fortress death. That's just my opinion. Now Spur Death, like I said, Spurs are mostly for baiting and death is definitely a great stat for baiting. Uh, Spur Death can also really work well with Altomes. I know I said that with Spur Attack, but uh, it's worth mentioning again. Um, characters such as Katarina, who has Attack Ploy, built in and in their kit and a double ploy in their weapon which is also an alto is really really loving the boss from spur death because you'll be able to just abuse her tome on top of getting an extra four death so it really synergizes well tanks in general can use it lucas for example lucas with guard can just completely wall zelgus or a lot of actual um, armored units such as uh, Arden, Effie, until they proc Aether anyway, so if you have Guard, that becomes a non-issue most of the time. But yeah, it's just a really solid seal in general. Um, but at the same time, you already have options with Death Tactic, 
uh, Drive Death, which is cheaper, and Fortify Death, which is more consistent. You can be away from uh, the unit in particular and actually still use, still have the buff. So as a result, it's kind of, yeah, it depends on your situation, really. Time for Death Plus 3, one of the two seals that has five versions of itself. Yeah, isn't that great? Do you really need five seals? God damn. But, uh, yeah, th this is the kind of seal that maybe you want one off? Top? And even then, I'd say Fortress Dev does mostly what that does and better. Um, just overall, it's kind of expensive. And unless you really want to keep your attack, so for example, I upgraded one for Baroka because I feel like her attack was already too low, so I didn't want to go lower. This could be an option. Though in general, it's it doesn't tend to be ex exactly worth it. Now enough of this. I would just repeat myself again explaining how I feel about death, so it's useful, it's just a bit expensive considering how good the rest of the seals are. Moving on to deflect magic. As usual, since it's a deflect, I was not the one to upgrade it. So uh, thank you to Denka for giving me this, for providing the screenshot. As usual, it's a deflect skill, <laughs> but in this case, it actually helps for one particular matchup that is still relevant, even in somewhat high tier arena. Like, you can still find a single Reinhardt, lone Reinhardt, in a non-horse emblem nowadays, just because a lot of people plus ten the guy, and he still scores decently purely because of purges. Deflect magic completely walls him off. Um, there is a plenty of options to destroy Reinhardt, like Dirt and Julia with Divine Naga completely walls him in every scenario. But Deflect Magic is a good option if you want to have an extra option and you don't have Dirt or Julia as the R5 star exclusive. They honestly should drop, but whatever, that's that's science, right? So, it can be useful in certain situations, but like I said, it is extremely expensive. There are seals that are more consistently helpful than this. Honestly, it is not worth upgrading, but I can see why someone would upgrade it. Moving on to Breath of Life. Oh boy, we are really scraping the barrel right now. Uh, Breath of Life is meh but it can have utility. Uh, a lot of the PA w character weapon, all of them excluding uh, Norian Azura, or PA Azura, whichever you want to call her, uh, have a Breath of Life 3 effect in their weapon. So if you combo that with Breath of Life 3 the skill, Breath of Life 3 the seal, you can effectively have an AoE healer that actually can do damage uh, without Sacrificing Raffle Staff or uh, Bride uh, Lin for Dazzling Staff if you want to have both, or just 50 Refining Stones if you just want to have Raffle Staff. And also to have slightly better stat spread here and there, like Lin can really also use this because of Aura. And honestly, Aura's Refine is such a joke anyway. I don't see why you would refine it. So, yeah, Breath of Life can definitely have some utility here. But it's not exactly worth it. I, I, I'm still like saying the utility some some moves have. I'm just saying what they can do. But generally, if it's under A, it's not worth upgrading. But yeah, it's basically that one combo that can have some utility. I guess you can also do that with Absorb, since Absorb has built-in Breath of Life three. But really, that's about it. There's no other situation that really helps with this, so yeah. Moving on to Earth Dance. Boy oh boy, Earth Dance, yay! 
do you like to have the do you like the fact you have to move before you get the buff and it's only one point over 45 death yeah me neither that's why it's so low uh herb dance is basically a less flexible 45 death in my opinion it's not great it's not great at all uh it's definitely not worth upgrading yeah you can do that with a dancer but Dancers just use Wings of Mercy so well already that Earth Dance tends to be just pointless. <laughs> Whereas Wings of Mercy can get you out of a tough spot um, and just overall increase your kill potential when required. There's just a lot of situations where Wings of Mercy can actually help you and Earth Dance won't. So as a result, yeah, you could use that as your B slot instead, which does not compete with Wings of Mercy. But why would you? Fortified Death is a seal. If you want to have something that buffs multiple target instead of a single one by a single point over... Yeah. Just don't. <laughs> just don't. It, it's not that great. Obstruct. Ooh, Obstruct. Why is it not in C tier? It's poop. Because it can have some utility, actually. You can use that with a with a tank. And actually, Guidance cannot uh, let character move to square adjacent to the character. Guidance will just be stuck. So, it can have some utility from that. I believe uh, Escape Route also has this kind of little thing, but I'm, I might be wrong on Escape Route. I know for a fact Guidance is one of those. So yeah, that's the one utility it has. Is it worth upgrading? Fuck no. Uh, at any rate, Obstruct 1 already works for that one fight in which that might be useful. There is basically no reason to upgrade it. You get almost nothing out of it. And that's something also that's a problem with death plus. You could upgrade it, but in reality you don't get three death out of it, you get two extra death. Two death. Eh. Like attack and speed can be it can be very useful in certain scenarios. An extra two speed can make so you double, an extra two attack become can become four attack because of a brave weapon. But death is just death. It's not that useful as a result if it's just a, such a low number. And boy, oh boy, we are in colorless town! My god! Let's hope this does not pass the two hour mark. <laughs> Armored Boots is one of the most useful. Uh, seal when it comes down to armored unit but it has a problem the problem is it scores 100 SP in arena <sighs> yeah so in arena it's not really suggested to use this armor march scores 240 so you probably should just run that which is a shame, because Armored Boots is such a useful ability. But, of course Arena is not the only mode, so Armored Boots is still extremely useful everywhere else. And with one Armored Boots, you can just run the entire team with Armor March, with just one Armor March and one Armored Boots. So it is an option. At least until you get hurt, but that's a detail. Honestly, I'm glad you can't have Armored Boots 3, that would be ridiculous, but that's just me. Uh, armored Boots is extremely cost-effective, again, it's 40, it's only 40 coins. And it's extremely helpful in a lot of situations, just not PvP. Honestly, if it was worth more, I would probably put it in S+, just because of how little it costs, and how much it helps. Characters like Zelgius being able to move two squares is extremely useful, except especially in a team where Lecter is. So yeah, that's pretty solid. Now, Quick Impulse. Boy, oh boy. 
Freaking Pulse Moon Boy's soul broken, guys! Well, there's other situation where you can use Quick Impulse. How about Steady Breath, Bow Fighter, right? And then you put Quick Impulse. So it becomes a 2 cooldown. If you attack, you get two attacks and proc Bolt Fighter, and unless they one-shot you, well, they're dead. Uh, if you attack Zelgus, unless you're blue, well, he's going to proc Black Luna immediately, and that might actually kill you as well. Yeah, and even if you're blue, that can be dangerous. Especially since most Zelgus in IT Arena becomes attack plus. Quick Impulse is fantastic for stuff like this. Also works really well with um, Iro, if you use Slaying Edge. However, as a whole, Quick and Pulse is problematic, because Quick and Pulse scores only 100 SP in Arena. <sighs> yep, we're here again. It scores really little, so you might, you will most likely not use it. And the other problem is, Hector can do just what Quick and Pulse does, but better because it works on the entire team as long as it's mixed. So yeah, uh, it has its problem, but, and I should have probably put it up, I am stupid, it is 20 coins. The cost is so little. And then you have characters that use, say, 3 cooldown with a built-in heavy blade, or say, Brave Roy and Eddie Wood. Hmm. All right. Those characters can actually use Quick and Pulse with a true tree cooldown special pretty well, uh, especially one in Desperation range in a uh, chain challenge. If there, if it's not a chain challenge, you will want to use a four cooldown with Quick and Pulse, which tends to just be a one shot in a lot of scenarios, which is really good. Uh, because you get two charge because of heavy blade, you get attack, that's one charge, Quick and Pulse gives another charge, so that's four charge, so you'll proc Dragon Fang, uh, or Ignis, or stuff like that. It can be really solid on them. Ares is also amazing with it, because the main problem with Ares is getting to the point where you can launch specials. The second where you can launch special, be it Bonfire, be it Draconicora, be it... Um, AoEs, he just jumps two tiers in terms of utility, he becomes a monster in terms of damage potential, able to destroy even blue armored units purely because of how AoEs are calculated. It is extremely useful to be able to get that extra charge quickly. And yes, you could use Heavy Blade, but you'd rather keep Heavy Blade on a character that um, can really requires it. Whereas Quick and Pulse does exactly what it would do anyway. And the thing is, Quick and Pulse doesn't require having more attack. It just requires existing. Um, in most cases, though, you'll use Quick and Pulse in a. Um, how can I say this? In an other. In, in a. Uh, AA backup team. You know how you use your first team to come in, then you have a. You have six other teams to prepare, then Ares can definitely use good old Quick and Pulse there. Um, you can also use it in in like Tempest Trial and such. Honestly, there's a lot of good things about Quick and Pulse. You can also use that with Leaf on top of his uh, already pretty solid Estus Flasks. And then there's a lot of combos you can do, but those are the main one I have in mind. The main thing that makes it so good is purely the fact that it's so low cost. 20 coins is just nothing. It's literally like, score maybe 5k in a Tempest Trial and you already have this. So yeah, pretty solid. Moving on to Rest Tactic. Now, while I do consider Rest Tactic be inferior to Death Tactic because of how little matchup it influence compared to Death Tactic. It can definitely be helpful on any, for any melee type unit that requires a bit more res to deal with dragons, especially with how Grimma is such a huge threat. Uh, characters like Fur can really abuse the six, six, the, the six extra res, 
Um, Titania can also use the 6 res. Yes, she has a res tactic in her weapon, but it's good to have a second res tactic. Or, you know, in, in some case you can just use horse buffs. But it's, it's good to also have a second res tactic just for her, because of how she is mostly a check for dragons. It's especially the higher you go in arena. And or if you're going to use her in a mixed team with slaying axe, Rest tactic can definitely be useful. Like I said, it's mostly characters that are melee based with a lot of res that you use as tanks. So like basically for Titania are the two that comes to mind. There's not nearly as much characters that can use res than there are that there are that can use death, but it's still worth noting. Oh yeah, Sheena obviously and Gwendolyn can also use res before I forget. It is still a really good seal though, in a lot of scenarios like uh, HM Grinding. Boy oh boy, HM Grinding, the answer to everything! Ah! But yeah, it, it, is, it is. Now, let's move on. Live to serve. Boy oh boy, it is such a good seal. And you might be surprised to see it this high. Well, it's quite simple, really. Without this seal, you could run Razzle Dazzle with a good way to heal yourself outside of Martyr, which, uh... Oof, Martyr. <laughs> it's, uh... It, it, that, that's a staff, alright. Martyr is just not really accurate, is it? But Lift to Serve is a very annoying skill, because the only two characters that have it is one that's a 5-star exclusive, and another one that requires to get 5 star. So the fact that you can have it as a seal at 3 is absolutely fantastic. But to add to this, you can run Razzle Dazzle with Lift to Serve. So you can actually heal yourself. Which is actually really good. Or you could also run Raffle Staff Lift to Serve as your seal slot with Desperation. And just go full on damage dealing on with characters like elites. Now, getting in range of desperation is the problem, but I'm just giving that as an idea, really. If you build on her death, you might be actually able to do this, but yeah, it's kind of iffy still. Lift to Serve is just a really good seal, purely because of how Lift to Serve is such a hard skill to get, to get a hold of. So, yeah, moving on. Savage Blow, boy oh boy, I don't think I have to explain why it's there, do I? Well, I will anyway. <laughs> Savage Blow is a fantastic sea slot for Pain Plus users and Deathly Deck. Now, why do I say this? Well, that way you can just do 24 splash damage to anything around uh, the Pain Plus user or the, the, the target of the Pain Plus user or the target of Death, uh, Deathly Dagger. It is a really good seal to do in conjunction with this, but if you're not planning on using healers, it is definitely not nearly as good. Or Jafar, obviously. Jafar is that special little boy can actually use different stuff than, the, than his little breath brethren. Wow. His little brothers. There you go. Fuck it. <laughs> this is one slew of a... This is one huge verbal diarrhea that I'm doing right now. Jesus Christ. Brash of Souls. This is a bit of a gimmicky seal, but that, that can have a lot of payoff. Um, Brash of Souls lets you actually do a follow-up uh, guaranteed follow-up, despite not having the speed for it, if you're under 50% speed. Now, the few things that you can do with it that is pretty fun is you can actually use Brash Desperation, and then you avoid to take a hit. Or you could also use Brash Desperation, and just, uh, as a whole, with Brash Desperation, just Overall, uh, fuck, what's the word?
God damn it, I'm having such a blank right now. You can also break Wary Fighter. There we go, that's what I'm going for. That, that was that, that's what I was trying to say. God damn it. I'm not used to doing to talk for this long. <laughs> and it shows. But as I was saying, you can break Wary Fighter with Brash Assault, it becomes a normal speed check. So if you have 5 speed, and then you will double through Wary Fighter, you will double through Lecter's Axe, you will double through Great Flame. There's a lot of times where you can actually use Brash Assault like this, Brash Assault Desperation, that way you will just quad through the enemy, uh, through s stuff like Wary Fighter and just absolutely destroy them. Brash Assault Desperation can also be used really well with Blade Tomes, but like I said, Blade Tomes already has a lot of damage and most of them have really good speed. So the only real good user of Brash Assault Desperation when it comes down to Blade Town is Leo. So <sighs> take it as you will. But yeah, moving on. Fly Formation. Fly Formation gives you a lot of mobility just like Guidance, but it's mostly on flyers. You can really abuse it with Blade Tomes, just sneak one up and just do like, move three square and just one shot a unit that way. Um, there's a few applications with this. There's obviously less application with this than Guidance because Guidance works on anything armored unit or uh, infantry related. Armored unit having a hard time moving, whereas an infantry having a bit more of a hard time moving as well as fly than, than flyers. Unless obviously armor march, but moving on. Fly formation on the other end is still really solid and should be used on a unit that can actually do a lot of damage. Fly formation on say, oh I don't know, attack plus summer Takumi with a brave bow would be extremely deadly because then you could just teleport across the map with if you're on a flying team and you have like goads like over 60 attack easily without any problem and just straight up KO anything that that is in the way it is also a really good way to use bond skills for example Inoka came with flyer formation and she had attack speed bond it lets you use your ally flyers as a stepping stone which keeps you close to them which lets you abuse spurs so a Spurs Seesaw could be useful there. And Bonds, obviously. So yeah, that's about all I have to say for this one. Let's move on. Panic Ploy. Boy oh boy, do I have to explain this one. Usually, if you're using armored units and they have a refinable weapon, they can really abuse this. Uh, the reason why I say refined weapon can really use this is because you get 5 HP on a refund. Weapons like a Londite have no HP increment increase, so as a result, they get ployed. They don't ploy themselves. Dragons are ex extremely good as well because of, because of this reasons of this reason. My bad. So. It is pretty solid. Upgrading it actually lowers the HP required for it to proc, which is definitely welcomed. When it's just 1 HP, it's so much more consistent than just 5, so it's definitely worth upgrading. So yeah, it is a pretty solid seal. Just if you are not using Armor Emblem or Dragon Emblem, it might not be worth it for you. Like For example, I don't like to use either of these. Uh, I'm starting to work on a Gwen and a Sheena. Well, I'm mostly done with with Gwen actually. Sheena, though, that's still a work in progress. But the thing is, even with Sheena and Gwen, you need to go HP minus. That's the best Bane you can go with. Purely because, like, oh, you could go Res minus on Gwen. Yeah, but then you lose the ability of using either ploys, or on top of it, it's a super Bane, and then you score less in arena. So, Panic Ploy is not that fantastic, and those are the two armored units I plan on using. At all. So, yeah, Panic Ploy is not really useful for me. But if you're a big armor player, or a big dragon player, Panic Ploy is almost a must-have. 
like I said, this is pretty. Uh, th this is a pretty subjective uh, tier list in a way. But I will try to make it uh, good and explain my views and explain why, uh, in certain case, certain seals could be higher in a in another person's mind. So moving on to 245 reds. Well, all that I said with rest tactic applies here. Uh, 45 res is a bit easier to use and uh, it is a bit more flexible since it doesn't require a mixed team, but the payoff is obviously less as a result. Rest tact the rest tactic will honestly outshine it most of the time, but in other case, well, 45 res if you're using a full infantry team and trying to go off blade tomes with Ephraim and Erica is definitely a good option. Uh, it's also really good for uh, GHBs. Because in a lot like GHB grinding, hero merit grinding, you know me, you know me by now, I think. Uh, so getting an extra f four res can be pretty important to get a kill or to keep enough HP during the auto. So it's definitely welcome. I've used it a few times, I believe it's a Fiel's GHB personally. It's just pretty useful, just not amazing, and it's going to get power creep to shit once Dreadful Driver as becomes a seal, which is most likely going to happen at the end of the day. So that one really depends. If you really need a fortify res for a blade tome, then go for it, otherwise ugh, it's kind of meh. Now let's move on to Fortress Res. This skill is extremely premium fodder. The only character that has it to this day is Enos. And Enos honestly should be dropped to 4 star, but. and actually be able to give us Fortress Res 3, but. It's ah, uh, yes, it's their game, they're the one to decide. And until then, well. Drive Re uh, Fort Fortress Res has about as much utility as Fortress Death, in my opinion. Um, again, healers can use it, Azama is a really good user of it, um, Grima has so much attack you can actually afford to buy the, the 3 attack cost for 5 res, if you really want to abuse his DC ability and or fighting dragons, because uh, if you're fighting, if all you want is DC, you'll probably just run DC, uh, DC, DD3 which obviously is higher on the list, for obvious reasons. So yeah, just a, a decent seal, but it's a bit niche. Um, outside of those two characters I've said, there's none of them that really come to my mind. But yeah, I, I, I feel like I also did see a few things like in a Show Me Your Build I did with Sages earlier. Where it was like, I think, a Mia that had like, I think, 35 death with 30 res. You can do stupid stuff like this with double fortress. With, 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 with double fortress. So, it's good considering, but if you don't need it personally, there's no point in going for it. It's just kind of meh overall, I guess. But yeah, it's still, it, it still has its use. Moving on to Res Ploy. Boy, oh boy, Res Ploy. Uh, it's kind of pointless, isn't it? Most unit you'll find will not have a lot of a lot of res. Why do you think Reinhardt is this incredible a unit? Uh, most of the res tanks are going to be ranged, and guess what happens to those guys? They don't appear much in Iterina. Wow! I, I'm sure I, no one guessed that before, but... Yeah, uh, Resploit tends to be pretty useless, useless as, a, as a... Wow. Tends to be pretty useless as a result. Uh, it can be useful in, in a GHB here or there, definitely, but... Generally, Death Boy will help you more, Attack Boy will help you more, there's way more characters that can use it. 
And honestly, most of the characters that are mages that you will use have so much attack, or mages, or dragons in some case, have so much attack they don't really need it or as adaptive damage. Now, certain dragons can definitely use this, but personally, they have better use of her C slot, especially with stuff like drive attack being a thing. Yeah, you can combo the two, but the thing is, drive attack, quick repose, close death, that's already three seal slot, and they help all they all help more than Restroy would. For spec damage, for tanking, for all of these. So it's a seal I would kind of avoid personally. But if you feel like you want it purely because Oh, I don't know. Um, I want to make a character a ployer, though I believe none of the ployers in question fa uh, fail to have rest ploy, so that's not really a good argument, is it? Uh, Sias and Arvis are attacking speed. Uh, Katarina is speed and res, I believe. And Loot has rest ploy in her base kit. Hooray! So. That's a problem, I guess. You can't really use Resploit then. It's useful for some GHB farming if that's enough for you, but outside of this, it's going to be maybe useful in some PvE matches. Some GHBs as well, you might just need an extra 5 damage. It's not fantastic though, like I said, there's just so much more better option is the problem. You don't have enough enough points to upgrade everything, so you have to prioritize what matters. This is the whole reason why I did this tier list, so... Moving on to Artie Bearing. Oh boy. Um, Artie Bearing was a screenshot provided by Xnera yet again. Um, it is a interesting seal. For the moment, I don't see much use of it. But I see good potential in the in the seal. For example, there are situations where you're going to prefer to run RD Bearing if Vintage becomes a seal. Yes, I know. It's not gonna happen. I hope it's not, but it's IS, and IS is not known to be smart, are they? So uh with that in mind, I would say be wary of this. If they do do this, RD Bearing is just going to skip up to jump a bunch of tier. There are a lot of characters that can abuse Vintage um, if it was a seal. Ira with Raf Regnal Rafstra. Uh, LA Hector with Double Raf Bonfire. Since that just recharges itself, then you literally cannot win unless you have a seal like this. Because it's like if you attack vintage procs, that's an extra 40 damage. Unless you have like triangle, uh, like a TA up, it's a problem. And if he initiates on you, well, you're fucked as well. Unless you have vintage yourself with enough damage, there, there's a lot of situation where it can be a problem. Now, I'm not saying this is absolutely like required or anything. Um, RD bearing has its use. It's just. Right now, it sits as a pretty underwhelming seal overall. So, just skip it, in my opinion. But keep in mind out, if Vantage becomes a seal, you'll know that this will be important. And also, if Desperation becomes a seal, because Bolt Fighter Desperation is totally fair and balanced, because Bolt Fighter works at any HP percent, it's already a thing with Ellie Lin and uh, H. Jacob, but thankfully the, the weapons themselves are so underwhelming when it comes out to dealing um, anything that it's a non-issue, honestly. So, alright. Whatever. <laughs> Tank fuck, honestly, but say it was in a good weapon as a second effect for an armored unit, that would not be fun. But yeah, outside of that, Arnie Bearing doesn't do any anything. It's really just to counter Vantage and Desperation 
at the moment. They might in they might add new skills that get influenced by Artie Baron, but honestly, I don't see it. I really don't see it. Moving on. Spurrez. <sighs> it's a worth 45 res, but it can be used for bait for um, increasing bulk on a baiting unit. Now, in what situation would that be useful? Well, say you're using a Burkut Slains character. The extra res could help. It could definitely help against dragons as well if it's a melee unit. So, yeah, it has its utility. It's still too expensive, essentially, is what it is. Uh, it's another one of those seals where you have to pay to make 100% of the time. Free player, a new player, or old. It just never was distributed as a seal, and as a result, it's quite underwhelming. Uh, it's just four res, but it's four res that's just useful in certain scenario like Burkut lands tanking and dragons and the dragon part is completely irrelevant if the unit is ranged because. Most range units have more res than death. So as a result, well, obviously, it loses a lot of utility. So, let's move on. Boy oh boy, we're in the greatest seals now. Res plus 3. Uh, the only utility I can see out of this is probably just having more res so you can proc your ploys easier. But again, it's better to just not worry about that and just run two ploys in a lot of scenario. Uh, the extra res could be useful in certain GHB, but like I said before, this is 150 coins that you're spending. At what cost? Like, 150 coins for two res. At that point, if you really want the res, don't bother, still. It's not really worth it. In a lot of other scenarios, you could just run close death for dragons, it does better. Um, if you're talking about a mage tank, such as, say, Niles, for example, Distant Death does better, so... <sighs> this seal doesn't have, doesn't have much utility, honestly. It's more like, oh, I've already used my Distant Death seal, and I've already used my Fortress Rest seal. Well, I guess I need another one. And it's gonna be a normal rest seal. Yay! Or something like that. Which is not really ideal, honestly. And now for the last seal. I can't believe we're already at the end. Oh boy. HP plus 5. Wow, we have 5 of those. Why? Why do we have 5 of those? Honestly, the only characters that can really abuse this kind of seal, and by abuse I mean barely used, because HP res is just completely better, is um, healers, yet again. Uh, healers don't have much of an option for A slot, so, and some of them have so little HP that having an extra 5 HP helps a ton. Also, 5 HP overall increases your bulk in both death and res for the first fight. So if, you're, if your goal is to just hit desperation, this is definitely your best option. Easily. But, again, HP res is a thing and we're most likely going to get more of those seals in the later um, Tempest Trial. So as a result, it's really, really low priority. There's no point in doing so, in my opinion, just wait for an HP death seal, in my opinion, for characters like Elise, because they already have so much res anyway. So, yeah. It's a pretty mess seal, I honestly would not upgrade it. Same thing for res, by the way. Uh, like, usually when there's multiple copies of them, I'd say usually make one or one, two, or two, three depending on which one it is, but those two are just... They, they see so little use, and they occupy a slot that can be 
use for something else that would definitely help you way more than just a measly stat increase in, the, in their cases. So, yeah. This was my thoughts about every seals of this game. I will most likely do an update every now and then whenever there's new seals introduced. Uh, so if you want to, uh, to know more about these when they, when they come out, you can just, I guess, sub and hit the bell, whatever. I don't tend to upload a lot, so... And, and with that said, as usual, Discord will be in the description below if you want to talk to me. If not, uh, then I can also be in the comment. I will most likely be reading everything anyway, as usual. So, yeah. This was a two-hour video. I can 100% be sure that no one will fucking watch at this point. So, have a nice one, guys.